Hey y'all. So let's pick back right, right up where we left off yesterday. Um, I want to talk about how God is concerned over his care of us and how he's watchful to us. He's engaged. And I, I want to read an account from Mark chapter five, because this has spoken to me so many times in that regardless of all of the other people in the world and all the things that are going on, which right now across our globe, there are some major shifts going on that God is very aware and concerned over and involved in, but they do not take his attention away from you. Now that's hard for our natural minds to understand because, you know, when we're comparing circumstances, the other things that are going on do seem significantly more intense and more important than maybe what we have going on. And that's what the enemy would like for you to think. He wants you to feel like God doesn't have time for you, that you should be grateful for what you have and you shouldn't ask him for anything else. And we should be content in our present circumstances, but we should never be, um, we should never accept the brokenness of the world when there's a restorative promise in God's word. Um, God's original plan and intent for mankind was the Garden of Eden all over the world, not just in one area. So whatever is going on in our life, God cares about. He absolutely cares about. And he is engaged. So we are going to look at um, Mark 5 and let's see. We're going to read quite a bit of scripture to get the whole picture. So let's start in verse 21. And I want you to listen for the examples of God's engagement with his children. Okay. Now remember, Jesus is the Godhead in humanly form, right? So he is um, son of God and son of man. And he was the exact expression of the father. So the way that Jesus interacted with people is the way that God interacted with people. And he said, I only say what I hear my father say and I only do what I see my father do. So the way that Jesus acted and responded is exactly what the father instructed him to do. So we can know that the way Jesus interacted with people was an expression of the heart of the Father. Now, um, verse 21. I'm going to put my glasses on. <laughs> and when Jesus had recrossed the boat to the other side, a great throng gathered around about him, and he was at the lake shore. And then one of the rulers of the synagogue came up, Jair Jairus by name, and seeing him, he prostrated himself at his feet. And he begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be healed and live. And Jesus went with him, and a great crowd kept following him, and pressed him from all sides, so as almost to suffocate him. And there was a woman who had had a flow of blood for twelve years, and who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but instead she grew worse. She had heard the reports concerning Jesus and she came up behind him in the throng and touched his garment. For she kept saying, if I only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. And immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source and suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment. And Jesus, recognizing in himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth, turned around immediately in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples kept saying to him, You see the crowd pressing hard around you from all sides, and you ask, Who touched me? Still, he kept looking around to see her who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had been done for her, though alarmed and frightened and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith, your trust and confidence in me, springing from faith in God, has restored you to health. Go into peace and be continually healed and free from your distressing bodily disease. While he was still speaking, there came some from the ruler's house who said to Jairus, Your daughter has died. Why bother and distress the teacher any further? 
overhearing, but ignoring what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep believing. And he permitted no one to accompany him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house, the ruler of the synagogue, he looked carefully with understanding at the tumult that the people were weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had gone in, he said to them, Why do you make an uproar and weep? The little girl is not dead, but is sleeping. And they laughed and jeered at him. But he put them all out, and taking the child's father and mother and those who were with him, he went in where the girl was lying. Gripping her firmly by the hand, he said to her, Talitha Kumi, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. And instantly the little girl got up and started walking around, for she was 12 years old, and they were utterly astonished and overcome with amazement. And he strictly commanded and warned them that no one should know this. And he expressly told them to give her something to eat. Now we're going to talk about this tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.